Hey everyone, good morning. I am still in my pajamas, I guess you could say, although this qualifies, I think, as a top. Um, so I wanted to talk to you guys today about my very exciting new Sociology of Gender Studies class that I'm taking this semester. My first day of the class was yesterday. And we started off the class actually by watching an episode of The Brady Bunch. And it was focused around um, women's lib, as they called it. Um, and it was obviously made in the 60s when feminism and all that stuff, uh, the second wave was really taking hold. And um, the episode started out with just an interviewer going up um, to the school that Marsha Brady went to and like asking all the girls what they thought of women's liberation. And Marsha had a very eloquent um, answer. And she, though, at, like after she had given her answer, she was talking to one of her friends who like hesitated when the guy asked the question and she said that if her dad or brothers heard her talking like that that she would be in trouble and then Marsha Brady gets worried and then um, she tries to stop them from seeing it on TV that night but they end up seeing it anyway um, but there's no like backlash from it from her family her mom is very proud of her and everyone's really excited that she got on TV it's just that um, it's known then after the fact that her father doesn't think doesn't really support um, women's live thinks they're a little extreme and the brothers don't think you know girls can do anything boys can do they think that's kind of laughable and then we kind of see this whole gender role situation play out because she tries to become Marsha Brady uh, tries to become a boy scout and um, the oldest Brady I don't remember his name tries to become a sunflower girl or he tries, but then actually the younger brother becomes a sunflower girl. Sorry. And um, sunflower girls is, is like brownies or like before, I guess, Girl Scouts existed. Um, and, you know, it's just portrayed as like, oh, being a sunflower girl is really humiliating and shameful. But Marsha as the Boy Scout is simply not good at it. But it's not humiliating in the same way being a sunflower girl is and that's just because how our society tells us uh to view feminine and masculine things you know we idealize masculinity and femininity is devalued and we see that in so many places that's just one example and at the end of the episode she ends up uh, passing all her tests to become a boy scout and um you know, which is awesome. But then, at the, but then she doesn't want to go to the initiation ceremony. Everyone's very supportive. She wants to stay home and read a fashion magazine. That's not even a joke. I was like, really? This is what they're going to do at the end? You know, it was such a great episode, I thought. And, you know, it was really interesting to think about. And we talked about in my class how feminism is not portrayed as blatantly in TV anymore. Surely situations like this come up, you know, like, oh, girls can do anything boys can do. And stuff like that. You still see that in TV and movies. But it's not as blatant. You know, they they don't really say, like, feminism and things like that. They said women's lib um, in the show. But they don't really say things like that. You know what I mean? It, it's all a little bit more in the undertones of things. And I just thought it was interesting to compare how we talk about feminism differently or women's liberation, but I mean, it really means feminism, you know, because I feel like back in the day, there was still some stigma around it as we can kind of see it was seen as kind of a shocking viewpoint to have, but I don't think it was quite as stigmatized. I don't think feminism was quite as stigmatized as it is today. Identifying as a feminist is not really accepted, you know what I mean? Like, if I say I'm a feminist, People will automatically assume I'm a man-hater and that I think men should not exist, that I totally hate men, that I don't believe men should be equal with women, that I think women are superior to men. I hear this stuff on a daily basis. I mean, and it gets frustrating and annoying because it's so not true. 
but that's unfortunately how the popular culture and media portrays feminism. I mean, they hardly ever talk about feminism, but when feminists or like known feminists are portrayed, it's usually not in the most positive way. And I think it's really sad that things are like that. And, you know, I almost do think we need to go back to the more blatant stuff because I think that as a culture and as a society and other societies as well, but ours, I am talking about just because I live in it. Um, we need to have a conversation about feminism and about women and how we view women, how we treat women, women's experiences, because we don't really do that very much. You know, we put all these stereotypes on women. We assume what women are interested in. We assume women's points of view a lot of times, you know, and we create it. We culturally construct it, you know, through things, for example, reality TV. You know, most reality shows that involve women have to do with them either going for a guy or being catty and, you know, getting the claws out like the Real Housewives would be an example of something like that. Um, or they're fighting over looks like on stuff like uh, America's Next Top Model. You know, we see these three categories, men, looks, and cat fights as really the only three major representing categories for women in reality TV. And we have to think about what that says about what we think women are, what we think it says about what we think women are, and how we perceive women because of these media representations. And, you know, it's a conversation that I will continue in a part two of this video at some point. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you later.